Okay, hello YouTubers. Uh, I've had a couple requests uh, about uh, cheap structures, how a do-it-yourselfer would build cheap structures. There's a lot of good information out there on YouTube. I'm going to point to some of the different categories. Uh, cordwood construction. Um, obviously where it's left where you see the round part and you make the walls as long as you want. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are aware of cob. Uh, straw bale is another way, although the bales are getting to be like five dollars a, a bale uh, depending on if you're growing them or buying them. And then of course the earth ship is just recycled various tires, cans, bottles uh, in combination with earth to build a house. Uh, I have seen uh, what I consider a non-traditional straw bale wall and uh, what a fellow did is he just uh, put up his post every four foot and if we were looking down on it he put up a 4x4 four four post, 4x4 four four post, another 4x4 four four post, and he, he nailed chicken wire, staple chicken wire to both sides of the post. And then he went through there, so if this was a chicken wire now on, on these individual posts, he went through there and piled up about 6 inches of concrete along the lower, just mixed it pretty thick, pretty heavy slump, and put like 6 to 8 inches of concrete down here, and then he stuffed straw down in between those so the wall was only four inches thick uh, and then earthen plastered and I thought well that's a really good way to make a narrower straw bale wall where you don't need quite an R55 the same as an insulation uh, same uh, amount of insulation and then uh, then I seen these guys that are coming out with this uh, it's a concrete fabric okay so it's concrete embedded into a fabric They've got a, a structure now, a garage, that you come out, put it on a pallet. Uh, you unfold it using your truck, dragging it out, and put a leaf blower or some kind of air compressor pump on it, and it blows the structure up. Uh, the structure is made out of a fabric with a liner that will hold the air. Once it's aired up, you spray it with water, and 24 hours later, you've got a completely hardened shelter. Well, when I seen that, I was like, huh, that's interesting. They do draining ditches, drainage ditches out of it and structures. And I thought, well, that's an interesting uh, concept. So the thought that run through my mind is, I wonder if I can take uh, carpet. And I wonder if carpet will work as a substrate to put, to put uh, concrete on. I thought, well, I bet if I mix up my first layer uh, pretty thin and so it allows it to get down in the fibers and soak into the carpet that the next layers would come on and build up and uh, become stronger. So I've got some examples here today of what I want to show you, kind of my results. I'm kind of happy with the results because, you know, plywood's uh, OSB is fairly expensive, uh, $8, $10 a sheet, and every time it gets wet, it's... Uh, it's uh, Structural strength, engineer strength goes down like almost 50%. So very, you know, few times, and it's it's rotted, it's gone out, of the, and you know, it's gone there. And so I took some of this carpet. You want to you want to catch the camera? Uh, uh, I took some of this carpet, and uh, I just nailed two blocks of wood, one here and one here. Took a piece of carpet, which is very short nap carpet. I wouldn't even call it, I'm going to show it just a little closer, I wouldn't even say an uh, eighth inch or a quarter inch, here's my finger next to it, I wouldn't even say that's a quarter inch nap. I would say that's less than a quarter inch nap on there. And a longer nap carpet would obviously soak up and, and do better. So I took a piece of this and I just screwed those blocks there and then bent this piece over in an arch and put some screws through it. And then I put on one layer, pretty, pretty loose uh, or pretty wet, to get it down in here, and then uh, the second and the third layer, I've got three layers on this. I'm a total of about an inch and a quarter thick here. Uh, I've used surface bonding concrete because it's got some fibers in it and it makes it stronger. I'm about an inch, anywhere it tops, I'm, not, I'm under an inch and a half, but I'm over one inch, so I'm like any average of inch and a quarter thickness here. And uh, I don't know how strong this is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to be finding out here. It just dry, so I'm going to be showing you guys. Same time it shows me. I'm going to set it down here on the ground. So there it is. We'll see if it drops me. Well, there's my full weight. I'm a 200-pound man, uh, so it's holding my full weight, 200 pounds. I'm going to stand on top of it and see if it, uh, see if I can crush it this way. So. Uh, so 200 pounds did crush it, 
but uh, 200 pounds crusted at, at about that thickness right there. Now, I could have carried on and made this, I could have made that at any thickness I wanted to. And also that first layer, you can see I used a grout instead of that surface bonding concrete. But still, I would say that that stuff will hold about a... Now, I'm putting about 200 pounds per square. Oh, not a per square inch. I'm putting 200 pounds on probably a 6 inch platform there. So, you know, uh, somewhere around 30, 40 pounds per square inch at an inch thick. So at 2 inches thick, it would take about double that. It, I think it would be enough to uh, uh, handle a... Uh, a doghouse. I thought of arching them like this, putting the front board in and the back front and making a doghouse. I also thought that this would make a great bug out shelter. A tent shelter, if you threw a piece of old carpet over it, long nap carpet over it and uh, took a uh, uh, bag of concrete out, surface bonding and went over it and it would get hard and become waterproof. I've also considered, wondering how it's going to work for roofing applications or if it would work in roofing applications because the surface bonding concrete is so waterproof. Uh, it definitely had its limits, but I built it to see what its limits are. Uh, and there's another piece over here. So I also thought that this could be built in a tilt-up panel, you know, like a 4 by 8 sheet. You can build it, you can see on there. Um, in the center, again, I'm a, I'm a, that piece right there is 14 inches thick, or 14 inches wide by 12 inches. I'm going to put my weight here in the center. And it just did break. And again, you can see how much of my weight. I'd say that took well over 100 pounds, though. And that time I stood on one foot. So, uh, and also, you know, wire mesh could be added into this. So if there was a thin gauge wire mesh added in conjunction with this over the top of the carpet, this would be even stronger yet or embedded in the carpet or in between these layers. So, guys, this may be a viable way and... Uh, so little concrete can be used, and concrete's not even necessary. This could be done with an earth and plaster, too. This could be done with used carpet, a wire mesh, and earth plaster, and depending on how thick you built these walls, you can see that these walls will get strong enough to be, uh, to be, able, to be able to use them for st structures like outhouses, dog houses, chicken houses, perhaps in applications in greenhouses, barns, and sheds. Um, thanks for watching. Red button.